guess what time it is. After being absent for a while, I finally decided to sit down and actually do a video. And there's a lot of videos I've been meaning to do, but of course, being September 11th, I felt that what better point to come back and do videos than today. Well, there's a lot of things to think about today, obviously, certain events that have happened. so. You know, it's one of those things that we should always sit down and remember, you know, certain events, but not forget that we need to move forward and not backward. So today being September 11th, let us mourn the loss of the thousands of people that died that particular day. 30,000 to be exact in 1973, or following 1973, when General Pinochet ended up be taking power in Chile after the U.S. imperialists backed a coup to overthrow democratically elected Marxist President Salvador Allende. After just being in power for just mere hours, Salvador Allende was overthrown from power and instead a military coup was instigated that would last for seven years. During this time, 30,000 people, and even more so that are not accounted for, may have been killed under the Pinochet fascist dictatorship. Pinochet came in with a force and absolutely annihilated political opposition so much that he took people to the National Stadium, which became his personal gulag, in which, th which 30,000 political dissidents, homosexuals, and basically anybody that pretty much presented a threat to his regime was massacred, was killed. So, on September 11th, let us remember the lives lost because of anti-communist sentiment and the need to back dictatorships just to combat said anti-com to, to, to back to battle these communist people so you know it's it, this whole fact that US imperialism you know people want to mourn over you know, the loss of, you know, of 2,000 people. Yes, it was a sad event. 2,000 people lost their lives. But let's keep in mind also the 30,000 that were killed just in Chile alone, and many more that have not been accounted for, that are even still to this day missing. Because the fact that the CIA, the U.S. government, wanted a their own puppet state in South America got it through a fascist military dictator. Other things that we should keep in mind that happened on September 11th was on September 11th, 1950, U.S. President Harry S. Truman also approved military intervention into the Korean Peninsula. So on September 11th, 1950 was when the United States decided to enter into a pointless war in Korea. Again, all to battle communism, which they flagrantly lost. It was a stalemate that still exists and has divided the, the peninsula and has been the cause of increased tensions and even the antagonistic bull crap of the U.S. government today. Well, more to do with Mr. Trump, but it still is the whole reasoning behind the antagonism and everything else that goes on in the, between these countries today. 
So we have to thank Mr. Truman, and yet again, U.S. imperialism, for the intervention in the Korean, in, into some sort of conflict or into some sort of country that also happened on September 11th, in which thousands of Americans died, thousands of Koreans died, and thousands of Chinese died. Thanks to, to once again, U.S. imperialism butting its nose where it doesn't belong, September 11th definitely should be a day that Americans should mourn, but a day that an American the day that Americans should never forget. Because it is because of their own government and their anti-communist hostilities, their flagrant disregard of Marxism and just in general any form of socialism as to why this day should be remembered. They want to focus so much on a particular event when they themselves are guilty of so much other bloodshed. I'm not taking away from the events of September 11th, 2001, by any means, but I do want to give Americans something to reflect on. That when they look back on history, it doesn't look too well for them. And when it comes down to certain individuals that happen to, you know, misrepresent a religion, for certain, for their own political and ideological gains, keep in mind that is the number of people that could pack a football stadium. One football stadium full of people, full of misguided people, over, mil over almost a billion people that practice, that have varying different beliefs. It is a small minority. It is less than 1% of their population. And you're going to demonize and even ban people from certain countries simply because of the misguided views of less than 1%. Oh, let us not forget, too, that the countries where terrorism really is big and prominent are the countries that are not part of that travel ban. So, you know, if we ever want to look into to things, you know, Egypt, Saudi Arabia, um, there are certain countries there that, you know, are part, you know, that are, where terrorism is prominent, Muslim Brotherhood, Al-Qaeda, but I've noticed that they're not part of that list. Hmm, maybe that could be because of the business ties that people have, and even one particular president has. Maybe it could also be the tremendous amount of oil reserves that seem to be such a big interest to a certain Secretary of State. And we want to bitch about 1% of the population when there's such bigger issues going on, as well as huge conflicts of interests. Just a little food for thought. Also, let us not forget, too, that maybe not on September 11th, but on September 9th of 1850, U.S. imperialism completed its, its admission, I use that term loosely, admission of California to its union. And let us first of all keep in mind that California was illegally occupied by illegal immigrants who settled in the country, and because of this illegal immigration into the country and occupation, a mock vote was set up in which these illegal immigrants were allowed to vote. These Ill illegal immigrants came from America into California, and these illegal, but because California had been military, had been illegally occupied militarily by the American by the American military and uh, set up as a territory, it was then considered an American, you know, it was considered an American, American land. Now, people want to say that this is all part of Manifest Destiny, which I have always historically used as another cushy term to say imperialism. 
Due to U.S. imperialism, this territory was now considered American land, so any American settlers coming in were allowed to settle and within a few months were allowed to vote. Well, we fast forward from four years after the 1846 Bear Flag Revolt, in which many actually declared independence from Mexico with the intention of, you know, remaining independent, were, had their land stolen from them. And so, after years of illegal immigration by Americans into the Californian state, California was in, uh, in these illegal immigrants held a election in which they voted to become part of the union. So California became a became part of the US colonizer and ended up be, you know becoming part of the what is now currently 50 states of the union. Californians did not even get a real say so in becoming a state. Instead, it was illegal immigrants from the east coast and other parts of the country that had the right to vote. Californios didn't even have a say-so. Californios didn't even really have a voice to be heard. Instead, it was all about imperialism and the ideal of white supremacy that propelled America into California and why we are now currently part of this union. And it is another reason why California wants out. California didn't have a voice. It didn't have a say-so. It was a mock election that was illegal and illegitimate. Illegal immigrants occupied this country, white illegal immigrants, and thus created this current state of affairs that we have now. California has and shall always be in my mind an independent state from the United States that currently is just under occupation. So when we think back to September 9th of 1850, let us also in September and remembering the events of September 11th, let us not forget that California was illegitimately admitted to this empire all because of a group of individuals that were pumped in here without the will of the people of the Californios, any sort of, any sort of say so, just pumped in and allowed to basically say, this is America now. No, this land is California, the Republic of California, long live the bear. Also, on September 11th, let us also wish a very happy birthday to Syrian President Bashar al-Assad, who has miraculously defeated U.S. imperialism and has all but annihilated ISIS in his country, thanks to the backing of Russia, as also the fact that he is the legitimate president of Syria. He has fought off terrorists, he has fought off U.S. imperialist-backed forces, and he has fought out pretenders to the government simply because they do not want, uh, simply because they do not want to be completely self-sustaining. They don't want, they want to have U.S. backing and business. They want to have this capitalist enterprise pumped into the, uh, pumped into Syria. Now Syria is by far a social from a so is by far, you know, nowhere near a socialist country. Bashar al-Assad is no socialist. Bashar al-Assad is by no means the best thing for Syria. But the alternative is far, far worse than what he could bring. It's one of those things that there's a reason why Marxists back Bashar al-Assad. Assad represents, if nothing else, a deterrent to U.S. imperialism. He represents a defiance to it, and people cannot take that. And of course, anything that is against U.S. imperialism 
we're going to support. So, happy birthday, Mr. Assad. California, you're part of a empire, but you're never, for, but your revolt is long but forgotten. You are an independent state in the minds of many. And while we reflect on September 11th and the events around it, let us not forget the millions, the thousands, the millions of people that died at the hands of U.S. imperialism while a bunch of people cry over the loss of, of 3,000. 3,000 people that were lost because U.S. imperialism couldn't keep its nose out of other people's business. It's because of this that perpetrated extremism in certain countries, in, particularly in the third world, as to why the U.S. had certain events happen to them, and now why we sit at the precipice of nuclear war with others. I'm NorCal Nick, leader of the revolutionist movement, and this has been NorCal Corner. Все пошло в старый лад на неволю. Взяли все у нас назад, землю волю. Взяли все у нас назад, землю волю.